The 2007 Walker Cup was a big deal. It was one of the world's greatest golf courses, Royal County Down, in the homeland of Roy McIlroy, who everyone knew was a future star and was really the key guy for the European team. And then you had this powerhouse US squad who was going over there with something to prove. Ricky Fowler, Webb Simpson, Dustin Johnson, Jamie Lovemark, right on down the line, every one of these people is a name player. It's extraordinary. Pretty much every guy that was on that team is out here on tour now. And, you know, I've won on tour. So much of the culture of golf is a lonely individual sport. They relish these opportunities to put on a team uniform, just like the real athletes. You're talking about teenagers and guys in the early 20s. They're just volatile emotionally. And for a lot of these guys, it's kind of the crowning moment of their amateur career. It's their last chance to really do something special at the amateur level. And so it's played with a lot of emotion. I think the most extraordinary quality of the 2007 Walker Cup is you would expect a team that had Ricky Fowler and Dustin Johnson to beat up on this GBI team, and that didn't happen at all. Rory McIlroy, it's the first tee shot and blasts one 350 down the middle and the crowd goes crazy. Then this lanky dude from South Carolina, Dustin Johnson, steps up. He hits a missile. The crowd like steps back. They've never seen anything like this. I was so nervous. I think I hit, I think my ball flew before I even got done announcing my name. Because <laughs> I was just ready to go and I was nervous. So, but I remember, you know, I hit it right down the middle. That kind of set the tone for the whole thing. I mean, this was going to be played at a totally different level than people had seen at a Walker Cup. There are only four points in the morning, but to me, they're enormously significant. I was really concerned that we hadn't done better in the morning. Within any golf match that finishes up or down or, or even, you have so much movement. And of course, the U.S. was favored, wildly so. For Saturday to end 6-6 is probably not exactly what the U.S. team was looking for. Kind of gave a, a lot of these callow young Europeans the belief that they could, they could do it. They're clearly the underdog, and yet they fought the stronger American team to stand still. The emotion to get ahead or get behind when you're dealing, especially with young men, is dramatic. I knew if we could win in the morning, it would be so emotional. The U.S. comes out in the morning, and they just blitz GBI. That was obviously the turning point that morning when we won all four of those matches. We felt like we had it there. All of a sudden, the U.S. has this almost insurmountable lead. That's such a, a devastating thing to the European side. They had to do something incredible in singles to get back into the match. I put it bad this morning, let Jay down a little bit. Um, so I was going out this afternoon trying to get a bit of revenge. Roy hadn't played great all week or up to his ability. He came out Sunday afternoon and, and he was just raring to go. He needed a victory for his team and he did. He played great. He kicked my butt, there's no doubt about it. take four and a half of the first five points in singles, that throws the whole tournament back into doubt. The U.S. was faced with potentially this historic collapse. I was thinking, you know, this is not going the way we thought it was going to go. It's going to blue and not to red, and you're going the, it's going the wrong way. Four points, all of a sudden three points, and three points, all of a sudden two points, and you know, it gets pretty tense. And all you're thinking about is, okay, who's going to win me that point? I remember making a putt and, you know, just hearing the crowd go, ah! Oh. Just takes, take their first single. Jamie Lovemark beats Jamie Moult, four and three. It really came down to the superior depth of the U.S. team. They just had more guys who could handle that heat in the back end of the lineup, and, and they held on. I remember all of us following Jonathan Moore's match. And he's got this shot in 18, 235 yards, and I think he hits his five iron, lands it, I mean, it's just all over the fly, lands it just short of the green, it rolls up, and he's got three feet. We're all on the side of the green. You know, Jamie Lovemark is right to my right, Colt Nose, you know, Ricky Fowler, 
You know, I think the only other guy behind Jay Moore was uh, Webb Simpson. I mean, we're all by the side of the screen knowing that if he makes this putt, it's over. I mean, we wanted to win outright. Is that, what a way to finish. He makes the putt and we rush on the green and we're lifting up Jonathan Moore and we're going crazy. I mean, it was just uh, an experience that uh, I all remember for the rest of my life. When you look at the names today and you see how stacked the American team was, the fact that GBI got within one point of the American team is really the most remarkable thing about the two-day competition. To have that many good players who are still amateurs, it's just probably never gonna happen again.